John, first of all, great to see you back out there last week. Uh, how was it to be to be back out on the pitch again after a month or so? It's always it's always it's always nice. Um, when I got injured against Mansfield, I, I, it was a blow. I was uh, really disappointed. I picked up the niggle, um, but the staff have been brilliant. Craig and the rest of the the, the the rehab team, physios have been been perfect, and I felt like I came back at the right game. So um, yeah, really happy to come back and play at home. Um, and to win as well, topped off. So great feeling. Any arguments with Macaulay Langstaff for getting in the way of your shot? Many arguments, many <laughs> arguments. My wife was fuming. <laughs> she said, "Yeah, but you did all the work." I said, "It doesn't work like that. If it, if it touches him last, um, you know, it's his goal. Um, but that's that, that's that, that's his instinct, you know. Um, and he wasn't sorry about it at all. So, listen, if he keeps scoring and we keep winning, then I'll be happy to play my part for sure." We saw two different lost counties in the game, I think it's fair to say. I think it says a lot about the ambitions of the club though, doesn't it? That after the match, the manager and, and, and you guys were all talking about improving the second half rather than just enjoying the first 45 minutes, which was a joy to watch. I agree. And I think um, if you were to see, if you were to see the, the, the kind of uh, ambience in the change room after, it wasn't like we won 4-2 at home against you know, a good team. Um, and and it, like you said, it does show ambition, it shows desire and a passion to want to improve. Um, because look, we were on top and naturally it's hard to keep your foot on the pedal and sustain pressure and keep going, especially when the team come out with nothing to lose almost. And so they want to try to, you know, after receiving probably some harsh words at half time from their manager, they want to come out and prove that they should, that they're still in the game or that they can still, you know, have a go. But um, I think we'll improve this aspect of our game because I don't think there's any team in the leagues that have scored as many goals in the first half, but football was a game of two halves and we have to be able to con consistently um, you know, perform. So, yeah, uh, it is a good sign that we're not content for sure. I'd like to ask you if I, if I can about um, two players uh, in, in the not squad. One is Dan Gosling, first of all, because speaking to him, he said when he arrived, he had a conversation with you and found out what being at Knotts has done for you and got your love back for the game and that kind of thing. And that he says that's kind of where he is. I wonder if you see in him a bit of yourself from 12 months ago. I mean, there's a lot of parallels. I think you know Dan's had a great career. He's played where we all dreamed of playing in the Premier League, many, many games. Um, and I see a lot of, of where I was last year to where, like, where he is now. So. He thought he had moved to other clubs come uh, you know, before, in pre-season. They fell through. I had that last year. Um, training by himself, you know, for family commitments and stuff, and hoping to get back in the game. And you know, deals get falling through. And so he, he, he came to Knotts, and um, that's exactly where I was. So he's got to get up to the speed of training, understanding of the tactics, fitness, feeling, and um, yeah, I was shocked at the level in coming down from where I was. And I think he also maybe has been a bit surprised at the intensity and the, the details that the gaffer wants from us. And so, yeah, sympathise with him and I'm really happy to have him on board. Um, unfortunately, we lost Matty Palmer, which is a huge blow. Uh, we all feel it. Um, but to have someone of Dan Gosling's quality and experience, it's, it shows the ambition of the club and hopefully we can get him up to speed as soon as possible because you know the quality is undoubted. The other player is, is Dan Crowley because um, he spoke last week after the game and in his interview, as he always does in every interview, makes reference to his faith and he's, yeah. he's had a bit before it sits. And I just wonder, from your point of view, whether that's something you've come across a lot. Is it difficult to be openly and talk about being a Christian in, in football sometimes? I think it can be difficult if you don't know who you are. And I think for Dan and myself and other Christians I know, our faith is not just a part of us you know it's not just like a cherry on top of the cake like it's it's the ingredients of what makes us up so you know Dan's been on a journey where he's had ups and downs and he is loving his football you know and he says in all the interviews he's loving it and so what sustained him through the whole period of being up and down is his faith in Jesus so when people ask him about scoring and his highs he it was like he'd be untrue to himself not to mention like you know I want to give credit to my faith to my savior in this so I was a bit surprised at some of the comments. Um, I, I didn't read a lot, but I heard there was a bit of a kerfuffle about that. But, you know, people are entitled to their opinion. Twitter's an open space, fans can have their opinions, and I get it. But just for us on this side, I think it's important for us to know, like I said, know who you are. Because when you know who you are and your identity's secure, uh, comments, they don't, they, they don't stick, you know. So 
I'm very proud of him and I think, you know, footballers notoriously have a, a, a name for maybe living a certain way and um, us in Ballers and God and Dan and other players, like, we're trying to show people out there that, you know, you can be a really good footballer but also have, you know, a strong faith. And so, yeah, there are challenges but I rather look at the, I'd rather look at opportunities rather than the, the kind of negative connotations that come with it. Does it help you and does it help Dan as well that there is a, a few of you in, in the not squad? I know there's, there's Junior Marias as well, yeah. but you kind of got that little sort of support group and maybe he's talked about that with you this week. So you're kind of all on the same same page with it. Yeah, I mean, so uh, I don't know how much you guys know, but we, ha we have the Ballers and God family mm -hmm. and unit. So, you know, away from the club, we have that unity, but like having D Dan and, um, and Junior and myself at the club, it does help because we, we're like-minded. Um, in terms of you know our, our, our belief in Jesus, but you'll find that this club, one of the things that's caused us to perform at the level we perform is that we all have, we're all reading off the same page in terms of togetherness, collectiveness, desire to want to win, and the manager has done a great job in all of us coming from different backgrounds and different beliefs and maybe his uh, uh, experiences in our career, yet we all really, really want to be united, and that's such a key term that it rings true in our team so look of course it does help having having brothers who are uh of the same faith and with different uh, and, and of the same belief um and you know what i've found that a lot of players are interested and they want to ask why we believe in our story because i wasn't raised as a christian you know and dan also so it, it's great the players are asking, able to, to answer any questions they have John, it's been a pleasure as always thank you very thanks much david go and get the kids yeah. go get the kids i will i better go <laughs> recording stopped anyway. See you later. Take care, my man. Sam. Hi, John. How are you doing, Sam? Good, thank you. Um, I mean, you're sort of touching it there already, but with a, a player of your experience who's had a few clubs in your career, is there anything to think that you're unique about the Knots experience that sort of, I guess, really lit a fire in you? As you, as you said before, you found your love of the game again. I think there's a lot of things, Sam. There's a lot of things that has lit a fire. Um, I, I, I speak about it in a lot of interviews I have. I mean, I didn't fall out of love of football when I was younger. I and mean, this is going years back, like a decade back when I was 21. But I guess when you're hit and your confidence is hit, you can almost kind of, it can get a bit hazy and you lose, you, you know, uh, sight of what made you really love the game in the first place. I, I found that many years ago, but when you're a dad and the club situation hasn't really been, been where you want it to be and your future's not really secure, Coming to this club has brought so much clarity and joy uh, and the process is just very, yeah, it's, it's, it's one that uh, it's hard to describe. There's so much going right at the club, the leadership, the players, the vision, the way we play, the fans, the stadium, the, the history of the club. When you put all these things together in a recipe, it's, the meal tastes good, you know? And so um, I say that. And before Dan Crowley came, I said that to him, I said, come and, come and taste and you'll see you'll enjoy it. And he has experienced that. And the other players who've come recently, they say the exact same thing as well. The level of detail that the manager and the staff work with, um, the clear um, instructions and details that we're given. It's, uh, it's a very, very special place to, to, to be. And, and look, like we work hard. Like the training, even we had a session today, it was a tough session. We work in a way that we're prepared for the job at hand on Saturday. And even if the result doesn't go our way, we know what the manager wants from us in terms of performance. So when you put all these factors together, it's yeah, it's a wonderful place to be. Yeah, the, that you work hard, so I guess that instant buy-in that you get, yourself included, coming into the club and all the new players that, that come into the club from here on out, that instant buy-in that, that Luke is able to get enough of people around the club is, I guess, a very important thing. Absolutely, and look, we work hard, the players, which is a given, but the staff work hard. You know, the guys who are in, in, in here filming, like Nick and Steve and the rest of the team, like everyone, like, this train's going in one direction and we're all pushing, you know, and so I mentioned that when I first came to the club, you know, I wasn't in the squad, I hadn't even signed for the club at the time, but there was a game against the Oval, and in the morning, the manager, the assistant, George and Joao, the coaches, they were there giving me a one-on-one -on -one session. I've never experienced it. So you asked me the question, like, what's this apart from other clubs? Like, it's those little details, you know? Um, so, 
So yeah, it's 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 a collective effort, and collectively we'll we'll reap the rewards, you know. You feel at this point now that you've got uh, an established role within the squad in terms of on and off the pitch. Do you feel that you're sort of a leader in this team already? You know what? It's a funny question, um, Sam. You see, when, when when we speak of leaders, leadership, like I think the highest place you can be is the place of of being a ser servant to serve to serve others. When I was younger, I used to think leadership was talking and screaming and and and, and looking like you're, you're you're ahead. Now I'm older and I come to realize leadership is actually, you know, helping others and. And I've ha I've had that in my career for, the, for 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 a while where I find it a lot of joy in serving and, and helping the team and others push on. So the younger players who are starting their career now, I try to stay close to them and encourage them on their journey. But you know, when you're playing and you're in the team, it makes a massive difference. So when I first came, I was in and out, um, finding my way, and uh, the repetition of playing and. It, on Saturdays and Tuesdays, it brings a lot of confidence and reassurance of, of my role. So to answer your question, yeah, it is nice to have have the role I have and I, I, I take it uh, as a huge honour, you know, to be able to impact and have uh, play my role on the pitch, but off it also. Appreciate it, John. Thank you. Cheers, Sam. Hi there, John. Um, yeah, so I want to go back to when you were saying you, you weren't super enjoying your football when, at the point before you just signed. Was this something you were talking about with Luke? Is this something that you mentioned? And, and what did you talk about when you came to him about him? No, I, I, I never said I wasn't enjoying my football. I was. I was at Doncaster. I enjoyed my football. I really did. Um, it was a different role, but I enjoyed it. Now, when you're not winning, that's not enjoyable. <laughs> so I got relegated at Doncaster. And I really enjoyed my time there, um, but when you win, it covers it covers a lot. And winning is a, it's very addictive, and it tastes it tastes good. So when you don't have that taste, it's you know it can leave a sour taste. Um, but being here has taught my joy of football to another level. If I'm honest with you, Jordan. So my mind today. So I'll give you an example. We were training, and we did a, a, a specific drill with the manager for the midfielders. And the detail what that was coached to me and Dan and Jim and the midfielders and Sam, after the, after the details that, that, that were kind of given, me and Dan Gosson looked at each other like, are you, are you seeing this? Like, we, we take, it's like we're taken back to like under 15s and the 14s and we're given new, new information in a way that we didn't see it before. So that, that gives you an appetite to want to learn and be present and even at our maybe maturing age, you can still get better. You can still have a big impact on. So every day is it's exciting. It's hard work, but it's it gives you a fresh appetite to want to learn. Do you know what I mean? So that on and top is that of, is that refreshing? Is that like so to, refreshing? Yeah. Inc incredibly. Obviously, refreshing. You're, you're an experienced player, but that kind of acknowledgement that wow, there's something I my whole career I never really clocked until you mentioned it. Is that really refreshing to see then when you come very, in? Very because you know what? training is it's monotonous. You know. You train every single day, you work, you train every single day, you work. So if you can go and you actually go into work knowing I can improve, that you can't put a price on that. You can't put a price on that, you know. So when you marry that with results and winning, it's a winning formula. So yeah, it's, it's a great place to be and, and long, long may it continue. Uh, I'm a Chelsea fan, so I've, I've been watching the John Over Gold podcast and he was saying uh, that kind of squad had off the pitch just loads of jokes, loads of banter, loads of laughs, and it it built this family vibe to where they were actually excited to go in all the time back to work. It didn't was seen it wasn't seen as work. It was seen as just like being back at school. Mm. Is that what you have at this club then? You know what that what I, I saw what John Obi Mikel spoke about on the Five Podcast, and uh, it's a very hard um, environment to create. That it's very hard, but I think he goes back to Mourinho. He said Mourinho formed that, and I think the gaffer alongside the coaching staff that they've been able to form a collective, a group that it's you want to be in, you want to be training, you want to be performing, you want to be playing, and so yeah, some of the boys will stay longer and will talk and banter, and it's a very it's a nice place to be, you know. And I think the club make a very big uh, focus on um, on character, on recruiting the right characters, uh, and I can see that you know 
the people they've brought in, is, it fits into the way that they want to grow the club. So, yeah, for sure, I'd say that it's a great environment. And like you said earlier, when you lose, it's not the nicest feeling. You can kind of dwell on it at some points when you lose. I was like that when I used to play. Um, but over here, do you find that, because you're all united, do you find that even if you do lose, you can all see yourself going in the right direction, playing the football that the manager wants to play? So you kind of have your mind switch off from the loss and kind of focus on the long term and that you're going in the right place? i tell you what, what sets this place apart in terms of how we're coached. When we win, but don't perform well, we're told, like we're really told. If we lose or draw, but we perform well, we're also told, like we're celebrating that way. So it shows that winning, of course, is essential, but the way we win, the way we play, the way we're able to carry out instructions and, and play the way that, you know, we're supposed to play, it's over the course of a season, you'll be where you should be. So we're not about nicking nicking wins, we're not about scraping victories. We want to win properly and dominate um, from the first minute to the last as much as we can. Look, we respect we've gone up and up up to a new league. So we'll take time to adjust but I think we've adjusted well and we can adjust we're gonna we're gonna improve even more. So that's just a kind of an insight into the mindset that is created here that it's about performance and that's something you can control. Sometimes you can't control the result but if you control the performance long enough the results will will be where they need to be. And lastly, uh, in terms of where you guys are currently in the table, are you yourself a little bit excited at the possibility of, of going up even to the high division now and then testing your skills there? Obviously, you're going to stay grounded for now, but mm -hmm. uh, does that excite you? I think in life, if you don't look ahead, you can lose your way. But if you look too far ahead, you can lose your way. <laughs> so what I mean by that is, we have to aspire to go up and push up. Like promotion has to be the goal. But if you look too far ahead, you can miss out on the details and, and bypass what's got us to this position. So we're, we're in a good position now, but we want to be in a better position. We want to make sure that we, um, we do everything that we can to, to finish this season how we finished last season, with celebration and, and uh, yeah, with a promotion for sure.